Little Monk has been busy at Warhammer Quest headquarters making some amazing product to keep this game alive. He recently started releasing updated versions of the character packs, the booklets and the cards, and reformatted the printing style so that we can actually print them out in a little booklet form or if you still prefer to print them out in a larger sheet. In this video, I'm gonna dive into how to make these. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. Okay, so this video, we're gonna dive into some binding of book material. Um, one of my niche niches I guess for the channel is I like bookbinding and I like making custom documents so uh, that's what we're going to get into today. I am going to try and use nothing but tools that most people should have available at their home so I'm not going to use my long stapler to bind the um, pamphlets I'm just going to use a regular stapler now let's just be fair. My stapler was probably made in the 1950s. It's a heavy duty stapler, um, but this is what I have and I've had it for a while. Um, and I'm sure this has stapled a lot of documents in its life and it still works beautifully compared to a lot of the newer things you can buy that don't last very long. But we are gonna just use a regular stapler. I have a box knife um, because I'm not gonna use my paper cutter. I'm gonna show you how to do this with just using a regular razor blade. We do have some standard white glue. I have some parchment paper and cardstock. Because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create, I'm going to do my simple binding on this larger document. And I like to have a backing, like a, a back cover to protect the back of the document. I've done videos on this before, but we're going to do it again here. And also I have my see-through ruler i picked this up at the craft store this is something usually sold sold in the sewing section um, mainly because when people are cutting fabric they want to be able to see designs and things like that so this is why i use it that way when i go to make cuts on paper i can see through and see where my cuts are make sure my lines are all good because this thing has just got measurements all over it but let's get into some of the documents. So I've already created one of the booklets and I haven't trimmed it or anything like that, but this is the Barbarian. And this was just a little test booklet. I still need to trim it, but uh, this was just printed right out of the document that I downloaded from Little Monk's website. Um, and it was, per it was easy, it was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, uh, but we do need to still trim this one. To, uh, I want to get rid of all this excess and you know just have it down to size i printed at whatever the document opened up to i tried some adjustments to the document you know pretty higher percentage but it's pretty dead on uh, as soon as i went up any in the printing i started it started shifting off the page and would look terrible so i think it was 92 percent is what it printed at so that's what i have there um i also have the elf uh, warrior here so what we got here is the raw version of the print and it's all ready to be bound together we got that but I also printed out one as single pages because um, as you know I am old and my eyesight is terrible I just went to the doctor and had my eyes checked and I'm slowly having to get stronger and stronger glasses one of the negative things about the warrior packs or the, the booklets for the character packs is the print was so small in the originals. Uh, that's why PDFs have been so useful for Warhammer Quest because you could actually enlarge them. And it's still it's a decent size at the pamphlet printout, so I'm I'm not you know it's not that big of a deal for me. I can read that, but I figured it'd be fun to kind of do a larger print. So this document if you just do the single page one not the the booklet one this document you know you it will fill the page so you'll have like an eight and a half by eleven if you're just wanting to get these print them out you could put them in a three ring binder with page protectors or punch holes and put them in a three ring binder whatever floats your boat 
you don't need to bind anything like that would be the simplest thing you could do and they would work beautifully but the print's a lot bigger it looks nice but what we're going to do is we're going to do my custom binding on this my custom book binding and basically what we're going to end up doing is stapling just down the side here and make a little booklet but i cover the back with a piece of black cardstock so i'll just kind of show you how that process works and i still use glue to kind of glue the edges and stuff it's just something i've come up with and um each of the packs will come with cards uh, the cards and the tokens everything you know little monk just went through and cleaned everything up reformatted everything uh clarified on rules everything so that the game just plays better so got new cards and everything like that which is great now you might notice a little bit of a print quality difference here and the reason for that is this was just printed at the printer on best quality which still came out beautifully not a problem at all but for these i went up a little bit so i ended up changing my paper source to um, matte photo quality and it just prints a little bit better it, but it takes a lot more ink and it takes a lot longer to print but you do get a better quality and I figured for the cards this is going to be important because I want them to look the best they can so whether when they're on the table they just pop and they look gorgeous and I figured I would take that process one step further and I actually did the dwarf warrior in the same format and you can just see a little bit of a better quality color, especially in the blue backgrounds, you know, so the color is just a little bit better. So if ink is not an issue for you and you don't mind, I use an Epson um, single print, you know, it only prints on one side, uh, refillable uh, EcoTank uh, printer um, because I print a lot and I print a lot in color. And I've, I've had laser jets and ink jets and they're just terrible printers um, constantly spending way too much money on ink cartridges and uh, it was just stupid. I got one of these eco tanks and I've been in love with it. I actually want to get rid of mine that just prints on one side to upgrade to a newer one that prints on both sides. But if it's not broken, why, why replace it? I'm cheap that way. <laughs> so but that's what I'm using for all of this. Um, but yeah, so you can upgrade, you know, change the paper that you're using to a photo quality paper, use the matte because regular printing paper is a matte finish and it will just print out a little bit better, but it does, like I said, take a lot of ink. So you have to be a little carefree with the ink, which I am. Also on the cards, I also printed these on cardstock. It's just a 65 pound white cardstock. I will just end up cutting these out and um, probably put it, gluing them to a piece of uh, chipboard and making them a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable. And I don't know, that'll be the end of it. But we're not gonna cover that on this video. What we wanna talk about is just binding the books together so this one is going to be a little bit different and most people are probably just here to see how these are bound together because this is the exciting thing so it's pretty simple what you're going to start with is folding your pages together and you just want to make sure that you have the right pages to fold together because you're basically just going to fold this in half but you're going to do it one page at a time so this is where the um, time is wasted the most on making these is you just want to fold them together and you're going to i'm going to probably get my head in the camera a lot so you're going to see my messy hair but the important thing is just making sure you get it lined up as best you can i'm not using a bone th uh, folder i'm just going to use i'm just going to run my thumbnail down the sides and just make sure you kind of do it in order and guess what if you do it out of order it's not that hard to fix so i'm just going to kind of jump through real fast and finish this up and we'll just i'm going to edit it out because you don't need to see me folding a bunch of paper i'll be right back okay i'm back so we got it all 
folded and put together and we just want to make sure our creases are good and we want to first make sure we went through and put everything in order so we just look at our page numbers make sure everything's going in numerical order make sure we folded them in the right direction which we did but it's always you know double check double check measure twice cut once check your page number staple once you know how it is so that's pretty much it. So now we just got to staple it together. This is pretty simple. Um, normally, I would just pull out this stapler, which has a long um, insert so that I can just put this down, staple it, and I would be done. This is pretty standard for people making zines or doing any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, not everybody needs to buy a fancy stapler like that. Actually, that's a really cheap stapler that I picked up someplace. I don't even know where I got it. But most people just have like a regular stapler. And you can still do this. You can still staple it together with a regular stapler, even though it's not going to fit. Like, you can't staple it there. So we're going to go through this process. So in order to make this work, First thing we need to do is get some, um, some, some sort of a backing material to put down on our desk. I'm going to use cork. You can use um, more paper. Newspaper would probably be more ideal. Um, but you need something a little solid because if there's too much give in what you're using, like if you use corrugated cardboard that has you know all the little ridges in it, and you go to staple in it, the cardboard's going to crush and you're not going to get a good staple. And when you're stapling, you just need a good solid surface so that the staple can penetrate the, the paper and all that good stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to end up opening our stapler like this. And we're going to just staple through and we want the staple to go through into another material. And then what we're going to end up doing is just bending the staples in and it's going to be stapled. And I'm a miniatures painter. I, I do a lot of miniature painting and cork is used a lot for basing material in our in the hobby so i always have some on hand uh, if you don't have any on hand you might want to pick some up for this project it's relatively inexpensive and i'm going to use two pieces this broken up piece and a regular piece and just going to set it down what we're going to want to do is put our, our project down. Now, if you wanted to, you could uh, staple or paper clip this so it doesn't shift. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue because we're going to end up trimming this when we're done. Open up your stapler. Now, here comes the important part. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're stapling on the seam. On my Barbarian one, I missed one of my staples and I couldn't fix it and what ended up happening what ends up happening is these pages just don't open as nicely so what you're gonna want to do is know where your staple comes out at so just kind of press down on your staple you can see well you probably can't see that there you go you can see where my staple comes out so this way, when I'm lining up on the edge, I kind of have an idea that's where my staple is going to come out. So remove the staple you took out. Make sure you hold your project down. So hold your project down. Pick a spot. Like, I'm not measuring this. I'm not getting carried away with where everything's going to go. I'm just going to pick a spot and I'm sorry you're going to see my head because I'm trying to line everything up. Now comes the hunt fun part is you got to get the staple to go through. See how it went all the way through. I'm pretty good on the line. We're going to do that again. Again, the most important part is making sure everything's lined up. We got a good staple there. And I'm still on camera, so that's important. And we got a good staple there. So, by stapling into the cork, what ends up happening is the staples go through the cork. 
and I ended up getting a double staple, um, which is fine. A, a double staple is not going to hurt, so I can remove my cork now. So now we end up with staples on the edge, and you can literally just bend these down. The double staple is going to be a little bit harder. Good thing that's in the middle. I'm not perfect. I've never claimed to be perfect at any of this. I just do what I do. And now we have a booklet. My staples are, you, you can't see those, but my staples are right on the edge. And if you, if this bothers you, the, the fact that they're a little bit um, sticking out, you can always, you know, just bend them a little bit more like you can pull back like you can you can make this work however you want but I don't get that carried away it's not that big of a deal so now we have our booklet everything opens up beautifully um, I can't believe I put a double staple in so now what we want to do is we want to trim the the booklet to size i don't like this white uh border going around it um, i want to kind of have that smaller size booklet and this is why i use a clear ruler uh, because what i can do is i can see the color i can see these lines and having it all on this cutting mat gives me more lines that i can use and making sure that I get the best cut possible. And then we just take our razor blade and we start cutting. So two things I'm going to tell you about with razor blades. They cut. They can cut fingers off. So make sure you're careful with the razor blade. You want a good sharp blade. Mine's a little beat up. I could use a change out on the razor blade, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, show you what a bad blade could do I guess um, but you just want to make light cuts like don't don't put pressure on the blade because all it's gonna do is get caught up in the fibers of the paper and that's just gonna create problems for you just go nice and slow make sure you got you know put pressure on the on the ruler to make sure the rulers in place and then you're good look at that look at that beautiful cut we got so that's these are like if you're going to get into like doing any kind of diy project crafting stuff like this this is why these rulers and having this grid on my my paper or on my mat it all comes in handy you can see through it you can see like i'm lined up here look how you can see how i'm lined up with everything else and if any of your lines are off, you can make adjustments and go, okay, I'm good now. And just make nice light cuts while putting pressure on the ruler, but not on the razor blade. Your razor blade is designed to cut. It is, that's what its purpose is in life, is to cut. And it's to cut smoothly and beautifully. So don't get... Don't get all like, oh, I got to get it all in one cut. I make that mistake every once in a while, cutting cardboard especially. And uh, I pay for it dearly. Uh, it kills the razor blade. And it also, um, I get caught up in the fibers and all kinds of other problems. All right, so we're going to make one more cut. Now these are going to be a little different. They're going to kind of come off and spread out probably. And just make those light cuts and you'll be good like you don't need to i'm sorry lemmy i didn't mean to cut you buddy anywho so there it is it's all done like this is so you can see like this is what happens sometimes this razor blade will catch the fibers and you'll get a tear and that's partially because it's probably an old blade but maybe i put too much pressure on right there and just got a little sideways it's going to happen. That's what makes DIY projects so much fun is because it is a characteristic of you. Uh, you made it. You, you know, this is something I can hold and go, I made this. So that's how you do the normal pamphlet. This is pretty straightforward, but let's say you're old like me and that print's just a little bit too small for your likings. 
or you just want a larger style um, booklet. So what we can do is print this the pages out. Just print out the individual pages. Um, when I did the original prints, it was 130% is how it came up in my computer. Your computer mileage may vary. But it came up at 130% and it kind of filled the page. Well, I wanted to shrink it down just a little bit because I knew I was going to end up putting staples in the side. So I just wanted a little bit of a smaller size. So I went to 120%. So basically a 20% increase from the original size of whatever the document was. And it looks good. Like this is a full size, you know, document. If I wanted to at this point, like I could just put this in a three ring binder with page protectors. I could just hole punch it, whatever. And I could just get dividers and, you know, that would be the simplest way of keeping all your character packs because you don't necessarily need to have these out with you all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's known as the Solitary RPG Simple Binding of a Booklet or a book. Because I do this with books as well. Because I have a heavy duty stapler that can staple up to 200 pages. Uh, and that thing really can bind a book for me. But... What I need to do is I need to trim a little bit off this edge because what I want to do is I want to put staples right along the printed uh, image because if I go too far into the image, then when I open it, it's going to be a little bit too close to the gutter. So I want to staple just along the edge, but I need the staples to bite into something and hold on to something. So I need to come out a little bit so that I have that, that edge there. And again, this is something for more of those people that want to make a custom size uh, booklet. So again, the, the beauty of my ruler is it's got all these marks, a quarter and eighth inches. And I can see through it so I can see that I'm lined up here. I can see like, is this straight? Is everything straight? That's what the, the beauty of these measure, these clear rulers are for. And I am just going to go a quarter inch outside of the print. Pull out my handy dandy razor blade and start cutting. Nice light cuts. I can't emphasize that enough. Let the tool do the work. You don't do the work. Um, something I learned from one of my mentors in life uh, about using tools is let the tool do all the work you just take it easy so there we go so that's pretty straightforward nothing too exciting there so now that we've made the cut what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put a piece of cardstock on the front and what we're going to end up doing is we're going to staple this down we're going to wrap this piece of cardstock around, fold it down, and go all the way around making a back cover. Um, I do this for a couple reasons. First of all, it's going to hide my staples along the seam, which is good. Um, and it's going to protect the back of the booklet, which, you know, with all the charts being printed back here, you want to protect it. And it's just going to give it a nice finished look when we're done. It's going to look like a professionally bound book. So that's kind of cool. So first thing we need to do is make sure that this piece of cardstock has enough excess. So that way when we wrap it around, we cover the full back, which this will. Uh, this is, I buy it at the scrapbooking section at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any of the craft places you may go. And it's just whatever they use for scrap. It comes in a 12 by 12 square. So I know I've got plenty to cover up. What we're gonna wanna do is mark the inside so we know where the quarter inch line is at so that way when we go to staple we know where we're at we kind of already know we we're not going to staple at the very top and very bottom so we'll figure out where we're going to put these staples and we can mark on this because when we wrap it around it's all going to get covered and nobody's going to see it i'm going to get a silver pencil and we're going to get this going so we already know it's a quarter inch. So what we're gonna do is come in. Again, the beauty of this ruler is I can see through it. So I know exactly where I'm at. 
I got my quarter inch mark. And then for here, what we can do is just kind of eyeball, like we know right about there is gonna be the top and the bottom. So we kind of have an idea where everything's at. All we gotta do is put this in place and then we're just gonna staple it. I'm gonna to try to do this so that it looks good on camera. And I'm gonna kinda of go close to the line, but not on the line. And look at that, good quality stapler all the way through. I'm on the line, so I kinda of know where I need to go. I know where my staples come out at. I will admit this is very complicated to do on camera. Um, all right, so we're pretty much on all the lines, so we're good here. And we're gonna be able to fold this around and put it in place. So it's important that you try to get a fold that you're happy with. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you need to be happy with it. And I am happy with that. So we're gonna wrap this all the way around. And we wanna pull tight when we start doing this back one. So you may want to like push it with your fingertips on the back before you do a final fold. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, probably it will show up a lot more when we put glue down, but you can kind of see the ends of the stapler staples, but that's kind of our look. So before we glue it down, I'm gonna go ahead and do all the trim work because I want it all trimmed out before I glue it down. I want the gluing to be the last thing we do. So now that I've added a different element to this project, I want to change out my razor blade because uh, this is the cardstock. I'm going through a lot more pages. So I want a sharper razor blade. Now that I've changed out my razor blade, what I'll do for razor blade disposal is uh, I have a sharps container at my house um, due to my, my wife's medical condition. So I throw them in a, a sharps container so they get disposed of. But if you don't have access to something like that, just make sure you dispose of it in a, a proper way so nobody harms themselves if they're having to handle your trash, such as the, the collection, uh, trash collection, like maybe a bag drops out or something like that. You just don't want a razor blade in there. Uh, you can wrap them up with a little bit of tape and then put them in a aluminum can, but people collect aluminum cans. so. You do whatever you feel is right to dispose of razor blades. I, I'm, I'm not a safety expert. I don't know what the actual legal protocol is for getting rid of razor blades, but just be mindful when you throw them away. Just don't throw them in the trash, uh, especially depending on where you live. Some people go through the trash to collect aluminum cans. And as a child, I used to dig through people's trash. So. That's my soapbox. I'm off it. All right, brand new razor blades. So be extremely careful. Most people get hurt the most with razor blades because they forgot they changed it. And it is a common problem in the miniature world. Um, we constantly cut ourselves with brand new razor blades. All right, so that one's done. So now we're going to go this way. This one's gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna hit a little bump right there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to change out my razor blade. Was well, that way it was nice and sharp and just cut right through that. You can hear that razor blade dragging, but look at that. A um, little messed up right there, but again, DIY is made with love. So that's what I'm going with. Again, I can check all my lines, make sure everything looks good, and then go to town. Look at that, the joy of a new razor blade. 
So that's our booklet. Now, if you wanted to stop here, you could stop here. This is gorgeous the way it is, but you know, this kind of unfolds itself. So that might be annoying to you. It is to me. So the workaround for this is pretty simple. Glue. Uh, we're just going to take some Elmer's glue and we already know where our fold lines at like we know that's a fold line right there. So when we wrap this all the way around, we know where everything's at. So we're gonna put glue here and that's gonna bond. And then we're gonna put a little bit of glue back here to make sure that uh, it's all held down nice and tight. And then we're gonna throw it in the book press, let it press for a little while, and then it'll be a done project. So let me get my glue open. If you are a follower of the, my channel, you know how much I love working with glue and how I work with glue. I, I, get, I get my fingers in it and I just get dirty. Now, if you want, you can go out a little bit on this. It's okay because we know we're gonna be putting more glue on the back side and just get some glue down, make sure it's a good coverage. Make sure you got a paper towel to clean your finger off with, which I forgot. You can also add glue down the spine. Like if this bothers you that maybe some of this stuff is sticking up, you can add some glue down here. It's not going to hurt. Like there we go. We got some glue. And now since we already got glue on one side, you know, this was inevitable. It was going to happen. We're going to have glue on both sides. I am not putting any paper down on this uh, side because I'm just putting a little bit of glue and I'm okay with what we got. There we go. Not too exciting. And then wrap it around, press it down. Now the thing with the glue, what's going to happen is it's going to soften that paper a little bit, but everything's going to be in place. We're going to press down a little bit along that edge, a little bit better. Keep cleaning your fingers because I got a little bit of glue on the outside. Um, Cause I saw this little bit here. There we go. I guess we can just pull this tight and then press it down. I know I'm a little bit off camera. It's a little wonky. Sorry about that, but I'm book binding. And apparently I got some crap on my back cover. But yeah, that's pretty much done. Like I don't even really need to press this. Um, we can pretty much wrap this up, but that's done. But I'm going to go throw it in the press and then when it's, I'll give it an hour or so to dry and then I'll come back and show off the final product. Okay, so I'm back and while this was drying in the book press, I was doing the video editing and I realized I didn't tell you why I had parchment paper. Um, I use parchment paper when I put stuff in my book press to absorb the moisture. So this is like I, cookie sheet paper is what I use it's, it's I find it to cook you know in the store and you can tell like it's all wrinkly that's because this has been used a few times and that's what happens when it absorbs the moisture and that's what helps give give you a better look when your product is glued down like look how that's the staples you can actually see the back of those staples over time that's gonna wear through and you'll actually see the metal but it's okay. It looks good on the front and most people judge a book by its cover. They don't look at the back and judge a book. We judge it by the cover. So there you go. So this is the larger book. And this is why I wanted that little extra because if I would have came in a quarter inch and stapled down, my pages wouldn't open as far and I would be into the gutter a little bit. So that's why I do a little bit of X extra material on the side and it's all covered up so it gives it a nice finished look if i could just keep it on camera 
So yeah, that's the uh, larger size, which I like. This is a good size, but I'll probably end up doing all mine in the pamphlet size like this. Uh, I went ahead and finished the uh, Dwarf Warrior and trimmed the Barbarian while everything was drying. You can see the print quality difference. So the Dwarf is in the middle and you can see kind of like a parchment design versus uh, the other two. And you can see that blue coloring really pops out. So that's why if you're, you know, you might want to print them at a better quality just so they look gorgeous on the table. So yeah, these are all finished and this was just kind of a, a, a kind of how-to video on all this. A big shout out and thank you to Little Monk uh, for taking his time and energy into keeping Warham Request alive. Um, I love this game. It's a lot of fun to play and having, you know, as much of a, the original nostalgia feel for the game because the original books were smaller, but they were a pamphlet si size like this or style like this. Um, just kind of adds a little bit more to the fun of the game. So I hope you found this video helpful and uh, please uh, support Little Monk any way you can. Uh, share this video with other groups that may be doing the Warhammer Quest. Let people know it's not that hard to make these. So thank you for joining and have a great day. Bye.